The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. Once again, I invite you to sail with me on a mysterious voyage into the unknown, unexplored country of the human mind. To be fair, it must be said that the mass murder of millions of human beings was not invented during our century. But to be accurate, it should be noted that in our generation, massacres, holocausts, and wholesale slaughter in general has been developed into what might be considered a fine art. Certainly, the atrocities that ancient, uncivilized barbarians committed in paroxysms of superstitious passion have been performed in our day with an almost impersonal and scientific objectivity. Is this better or worse? Or does it matter? Trust him. Trust him. He'll save us. Save us? How? You, your grandfather is old and sick. We have no weapons. My grandfather will save us. Now look, there are a hundred soldiers coming up this hill. Can you see them? I see them. You see us, too. Have no fear. Have no fear. In a, in a minute, we'll all be dead. My grandfather will save us. Believe me. Why? Why are you so sure he can save us? Because he promised. He... <laughs> he promised... Oh, dear Lord. Maybe, maybe we'd better surrender. No, no. Trust my grandfather. He always keeps his promise. Well, then what is he waiting for? Have faith. Have faith. Our mystery drama, The Golem, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Sam Dan and stars Robert Lansing. It is sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division and Contact, the 12-hour cold capsule. I'll be back shortly with Act One. There are times in the history of the human race when things become unstuck. The glue of morality melts under the intense heat of hideous pressures, and men are no longer tied to a rational society. Suddenly, the world is ruled by madmen, and human beings are arbitrarily divided into two groups, the hunters and the hunted. The year is 1943. We're in a cottage in the thick woods that surround a country town in a vast wilderness somewhere in Central Europe. The man is a forester. He is sitting quietly before a pleasant fire. His wife is telling a bedtime story to a sleepy child in a crib. And so the king said to each of the suitors who came to ask for his daughter's hand, all of you are handsome and all of you are strong, but the one who is chosen must also have a good heart. He must be kind to the poor and he must protect the weak. Shh. I think she's asleep. <sighs> now I can heat up your supper. Just imagine, Tom Jack, I was able to get beef today. Think of it, beef. I'm not hungry. You're, you're not hungry? Tom Jack, what, what is the matter? Nothing. Oh, no, 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 something's wrong. I don't want to talk about it. Eat your supper. You'll feel better. I'll never feel better. I was in town today. Yes? And in the square, there were soldiers, Germans, the Nazis. They'd, they'd rounded up about a hundred people. Jews? Yes. And they were shoving them into trucks. Why should we care? They're taking them away to kill them. Well, it's war and... Do you know what I did? No. I did nothing. I don't understand. What were you supposed once, to do? Once I saw a man who was whipping a horse, an old <laughs> sick horse. Do you know what I did to that man? Tom, Jack, please, you, you, you're only and going... And all he was doing was whipping a horse. Oh. And today in the square, I, 
I did nothing. All of us, we just stood around. We all did nothing. Most people pretended that nothing was happening. Tom, Chick, please. Let me tell you who was there. I'm not interested. A very old man with a long white beard. He was standing next to a young girl. I, I just don't want to hear anymore. Standing quietly, very quietly, looking straight ahead. And it so happened that his eyes looked straight into mine. Please, Tom, Chick. His eyes, they asked me for help, but I... I turned my head away. I denied him. No. If, if you'd done anything, anything at all, you'd be dead. Who, who could that be? I don't know. Now, I, are you sure you didn't do anything? I told you I did nothing. I'll open it. Oh. Who are you? It's the old man and the young girl. Please, please, may we come in just to get warm at your fire? Oh. My grandfather... Oh, and he's very sick, and he needs... Please, oh, a little water, just a little water, oh, and a piece of bread. Young girl, young girl, please, I, I want to help you. Oh, God bless you. But I can't, I can't. Please don't ask me to. They'll burn the house down, they'll, they'll kill us. Just let my grandfather get warm. Oh, no, 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 please don't come in. They'll find out you were here. Please don't destroy us. Have mercy on us. I'm sorry I disturbed you. Come, Grandfather. There is no one at home here. Tom Chick, what are you staring at? Did you see the old man's eyes? Now, Tom Chick. How those eyes looked into mine. I tell you, I, I won't listen. And for the second time today, I denied him. <laughs> You haven't touched a bite. Please, you worked hard all day. You must eat. I think I'll go for a walk. Now? Yes. In this weather, but it's crazy. Now, look, you listen I think to you've me. said enough for one day. <gasps> Open! In the name of the fear of... That's it! Come, Rick. Let me do the talking. Please, let me do the talking. Open! Yes! Yes! I I'm coming! Good evening, Lieutenant. <laughs> that is the Lieutenant's insignia, isn't it? As if you don't know. <laughs> We're looking for two escaped criminals. Criminals? An old man with a white beard. A girl about 20. What, what crime did they commit? Tommy. <laughs> <laughs> what crime? <laughs> You're a funny one. <laughs> Oh, Tom, this is no time for your jokes. The soldiers are here on serious business. You say you haven't seen them? No, uh, no, Lieutenant. Then you should have no objection if we search the house. <laughs> well, why should we object? Inside, boys. Uh, that, that, that staircase leads up to the attic, and uh, uh, this trap door is for the cellar. You are Tom Cech Masterik? The forest? Yes. Yes, he is. And, and um, I'm his wife, Marina. You've seen no one all day? No, sir. Well, those vermin can't go far. What will you do with them if you catch them? You mean when we catch them? They've given us too much trouble already. We'll just shoot them. Oh, excuse me. I had noticed you have a little one. <laughs> yes. Asleep there in the crib. <laughs> boys, boys, move about more quietly. <laughs> oh. She is a little princess, isn't she? Yes. She'll be five in November. You know I have one. She'll be four. Her name is Olga. Really? Mine is called Helga. It's the same name, you know. Uh, boys, there's no one hiding around here. Form them up outside, Sergeant. Uh, and won't you have a glass of wine, Lieutenant? Oh, no, not under me. Uh, what is your husband's name again? Tom Chick. Tom Chick. I need your help. My help? Oh, he, he'd be thrilled to be of service. They say you know these forests better than any man living. He knows every tree. I want you to come with me. Me? Do you have any objections? I need a guide. Oh. You'd know every likely hiding place. Oh, you certainly would. And if you can find them for us, there'll be a handsome reward for your work. Oh, Tom Check doesn't want a reward. That, that's just the knowledge that he's 
doing his duty. <laughs> you know, Tom Jack, my wife is like that, too. I can never get a word in edgewise when she's around. <laughs> well, let us go. Uh, what do you mean now? Now. <laughs> Yes, Tom Jake. I would suggest we go no further. Why? There's no moon. The terrain is getting too treacherous. Is it? We've got gullies, ravines. A man can fall and break a leg. You wouldn't be trying to frighten me, would you? And why would I want to do that, Lieutenant? Or maybe you don't want to find them. They're nothing to me. <coughs> That's one of your men. Sounds like Stryker. Sergeant, get some men over there fast. Well, Tom Check, you may have been right. I can't see a thing out here. Is the Stryker all right? Yeah, I was right. We're off the car and back. Sergeant, bring everybody close to the path. We're heading home. Tom Check, what chance do they have to survive out there? None. Well, we'll make sure of that tomorrow morning. Cigarette? No. Uh, no, no thanks. Oh, go ahead, take one. You know you're dying for a smoke. Well, keep the pack. Plenty of cigarettes. Yes, plenty of good food, good jobs. Four sensible people. Tell me something, Tom Check. Are you a sensible person? I... Here, have a light. What is it, Tom Check? What's the matter? Oh, the matter? As I struck the match, I could see your face. You had a uh, funny look. As if you were in pain. Oh, and, well, I, I have this arthritis. Uh, oh, 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 well, so do I. But from the look on your face, yours must be pretty bad. Oh, uh, yes. Well, get some sleep. Tomorrow could be another long day. Lieutenant. Lieutenant, do we... Do we have to keep looking for them? Do we have to? All you do when you find them is... Shoot them. Perhaps. In a day or two, they'll, they'll be dead of cold and hunger anyhow. Oh, you're back. Did they... Think... No. I have something nice and hot for you to drink. Take off your coat. Why are you just standing there? Shh, shh, shh. I want to make sure... I want to make sure the Nazis are gone. Why don't you take off your coat? I'm going out again right away. But where? I demand to know where. There are two people who need help. But you just I... said they didn't find them. That's right. They didn't. The Nazis didn't find them, but I found them. How? How could you... The lieutenant and I, we'd... we stopped to light a cigarette. He was facing one way, and I another. In the flare of the match, I could see... near a tree in the darkness... the face of the old man... You saw the old man? It was only only for a moment, but that moment was as long as eternity. His eyes burned into mine. The pleading... Don't you... Please listen to me. Shh. Once again, I turned my head away. And a voice whispered in my ear, a voice I had never heard before, whispered, This night, you shall deny me three times. Marina, I have denied him three times. I cannot deny him again. Oh, how easy it is to believe in brotherly love when your brother is lovable and respectable and acceptable. But what do you do about those brothers who are hated and hunted, who have every man's hand turned against them? Well, that's when you find out what you really believe the hard way. I shall return shortly with Act Two. His name is Tomchek. Her name is Marina. They live in a great mountainous forest that covers much of Central Europe. 
Around them swirl distant echoes of the greatest war in history. And yet, their lives seem but little touched. True, almost every night, they hear the drone of Liberators, Lancasters, and B-17s. But their small town is hardly ever hit. And true, there are people who are being ruthlessly exterminated, but as Marina keeps reminding Tomchek, it's none of their affair. And it wasn't until tonight. Tomchek, what, what are you saying? I heard a voice. No, no, no. A voice that said... Oh, please, I'm frightened. The voice said, this night you shall deny me three times. And I have, I have. What are you going to do? I need blankets. No, no, no. Food. I won't let you. Something inside it, me is witchcraft. making... witchcraft. The old man, he bewitched you. No, no, you and I, we don't believe in that. All right, all right. You can't help yourself. I know. The voice keeps telling me I must go out there. I know, no, no. Let me help you. You want to help me? Yes, I'll, I'll get a rope. I'll tie you to the what bed. What are you talking I'll about? I'll be able you... to hold you here. Let me. No, no, please. Come, Jack. Will you I'll get out of my way? No, I'll leave this place. I'll save myself and our child. Come, Jack. Oh, Lord, save us. <laughs> Old man, you're here. I know it. Will you trust me? I want to help you. Where are you? You have to be here. I want to help you. No, 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 no. Don't be afraid. If, if you need to kill us, do it quickly. Sure, I've come to help you. Why? Because well, the old man, where is he? You can't just let him lie on the ground like that. I don't have any more strength. He'll freeze to death. We have to get him to his feet. Come on. Come on, old man. He's unconscious. We must make him walk. Let him die. In peace. No, he's going to live. For how long? Who knows how long anyone will live. Here. Here, put this blanket around his shoulders. And take this one for yourself. Come on, old man. We must walk. Where? To a hidden place. It's a place I know. It's a cave. Oh, bless you. Do you realize how much you're doing for us? That's not very much. I remember once I did more for a horse. I never thought I'd be warm again. You were less than 500 yards away from this cave. The smoke from the fire. Will, will somebody no, see it? No, no, no. There's nothing to worry about. This cave is my secret. Here. Drink this hot. Oh. Grandfather. Shh, let him sleep. He'll get better now. I saw you earlier today in the square. How did you escape? Well, you see... Oh, I can tell you. I know it. I, I can trust you. My grandfather is, was a, a, a chemist in Prague. Yes. When the Nazis took over, he, he was afraid that, that they would force him to work for them. And, and, and so he, he went in, well, we went into hiding, and, and it's been that way, running from place to place. Well, that's almost five years. How did you manage? There were all sorts of people. Some were kind enough to help us. Others betrayed us. But you got away. Well, the officer in charge of the convoy, the, the lieutenant, he, mm -hmm. he kept looking at my grandfather. Why? He must have recognized him. Grandfather was, was a very famous research chemist. Yes. He'd been working on a formula that would release explosive forces m much, much more powerful than dynamite. No, I... I'm afraid I don't understand. I'm not very educated. I'm only a peasant. <laughs> I don't really understand it either. It, and I've been to the university... But he is afraid that they could torture him to working for them. So, so he said to me, he said. Yes? He said, let us try to run away and, 
And then they'll shoot us, and, and that way it'll be over quickly. But how did you run away? After we left the square, they, they drove us to the edge of the forest, and, and the truck had a blowout, and they ordered everyone off of it. Well? Grandfather took my hand, and, and we walked toward the woods. What do you mean, just like that? At any moment, we expected to hear shots and, and be killed. But nothing happened. How do you account for it? Well, I, I suppose they didn't think anyone would dare to escape, and they were so busy yelling at the driver for his carelessness, and so we just kept walking. Rebecca. Rebecca. Oh, yeah, he's coming around. Rebecca. Uh, Is that your name, Rebecca? No. My name is Rachel. Rebecca. Where are you? I don't understand. He, he doesn't know anyone named Rebecca. Rebecca. Uh, oh. Grandpa. There you are, child. G Grandpa, don't you know who I am? Of course, my child. You're Rebecca, daughter of my oldest son, Ezra. Grandpa. D don't you know who you are? Child, what are these questions? I know who I am. I am Solomon ben Isaac, rabbi of Prague. Uh, where is the book? The book? The book. It was sent to me by my old friend, the Spanish rabbi. The Spanish rabbi? You know him. Moses and Maimonides. Maimonides? Grandfather, Maimonides has been dead for more than 700 years. And in this book, he speaks of a golem. A golem? How it is possible to create a champion to make out of clay... A man of irresistible force who will come to the rescue of, of oppressed people. A golem. Oh, grandfather. Uh, I, I will create such a champion and he will rescue our people. <laughs> now, child, you must not disturb me. I must close my eyes and think. Yes. Yes, Grandfather. Oh, his mind is gone. It's gone. What? What was he talking about? Oh, a legend. A, a medieval Hebrew legend. About a golem. It must have been the golem of Prague who saved our people once. During some troubled times. A legend. A creature made by one of our wise men, but I, I don't understand. I, you don't have to understand the legend. He thinks he's a 13th century rabbi. He was never interested in history. Rebecca. Uh, yes, Grandfather. I will save us. You see, I'll save all of us. I promise, <laughs> child, I have never broken my promise. Oh, I was scared out of my wits. I, I thought you'd be caught and shot. Well, I wasn't. You found them, I suppose. Let's not talk about it. That, that's... Yes, I know who that is. Let him in. <laughs> As if we have anything to say about it. Don't despise me, Tom Check. Is it so terrible to want to live? Uh, oh, Lieutenant. Good morning. Uh, a cup of coffee, Lieutenant. Oh, never on duty. Well, Tom Check, ready? Yes, sir. You look as if you didn't even get to sleep last night. Oh, well, oh Lieutenant, sometimes he's just restless. Yeah, take these, Tom Check. Well, what's in the package, Lieutenant? Pills. Pills? I stopped at our dispensary. I got you some pills for your arthritis. Contact. But you don't have arthritis. Uh, yes, I do. Oh, what are you talking about? Since when do you have arthritis? Well, I... Uh... Ah, well, maybe he's had it since last night, eh? 
Thompson, we must be off to the hunt. Oh, Lieutenant! What do you mean, Marina? Uh, but Thompson isn't at home. He uh, isn't? Well, uh, you, you didn't tell him you'd, you'd want to come. Yes, that's right, I didn't. But uh, I haven't come here to see Thompson. I want to see you. Come, come in. Thank you. Uh, I want to help you. Help me? First off, Tom Chick told me a lie. A lie? About, about what? About having arthritis. Oh, oh but he, he does. Oh, he does. No, yes. no. Now, it's a minor thing, a silly thing, but he told me a lie. Why does a man lie? He lies because he's nervous and frightened. Why should Tom Check be nervous and frightened? Because he's doing something wrong? Something seriously wrong? Like what? Like hiding fugitives? You see how simple and logical it is? But, but Tom Check wouldn't, you, you know. He, he could. He, he could. would. He could. He is. For three days now, he's been leading me all around the woods. There isn't a trace of those two. Oh, but... He's got them hidden away. Otherwise, how could they have disappeared so completely? Oh, Tom Check would, would never... Marina, you're his wife. You love him. And right now, you're the only one who can save him. But, Lieutenant... Quiet. Shall I tell you how you can save him? <laughs> And suddenly a word, a single word, sears itself into Marina's consciousness. The word is betrayal. How can something she has yet to find out be a betrayal of someone or something that is very important to her husband? And just as he heard a voice in his heart, she also hears one now. A voice that says, one of you shall betray me. I will return shortly with Act Three. This is WBBM Chicago News Radio 78. It's 1107. There are times when it seems that the Lord sleeps and the world is abandoned to the will of the wicked. And during such times, perhaps the wisest course Perhaps the only course is to survive, to endure, to wait for a long night to end, and to hope for a new day. But meanwhile, one must live. And right now, a young woman named Marina, whose home is in Central Europe during the Nazi occupation, is listening to what she must do if she is to live. Marina, I need those two prisoners. But Tomchek doesn't... No, you mustn't pretend you don't know Tomchek is guilty. L Lieutenant, please. Uh, uh, but... don't, don't, don't cry. Tomchek, being Tomchek, would sooner die than betray them. But Tomchek doesn't... No, no, we... no, no, no. We must not go back to the beginning. We're past all that. Therefore, you must find out from Tomchek where they are hidden. And you will find out in 24 hours. Or do you know what I will do? I will shoot Tom Chick. You hear the noise, Rebecca? The noise, Grandfather? Uh, uh, the noise of the mob in the streets. They're, they're getting ready, ready to kill. Grandfather... Try to rest. Uh, rest? Uh, now? Uh, the people, they must not make the same mistake as last time. They must not try to barricade themselves in the synagogue. They should come out here to this cave, an excellent hiding place. And besides, the golem can be more effective out in the open. The golem? Yes, child. I can make a golem. But that's impossible. 
What you wish to say is that only God can make a living creature. Huh? That's true. But the golem is not a living person. The golem is a force. Yes, Grandfather. Yes. But now rest. A man-made force. Uh, where is Tomchek, the young peasant who is so kind? He will try to return. Uh, could he get me some salt, some clay, and some... Yes, yes, uh, yes, Grandfather, whatever you like. Now, please, rest. <laughs> Mm. Oh, my poor Tom Check, you've fallen asleep over your dinner. <sighs> yes, well, I'm so tired. Ah, oh, it's too much for you, Tom Check. I have to go out. Please, please. Maureen, I'm sorry. I must do this. Now, don't try to talk me out of it. But I don't want to do that. If what you're doing is important to you, it must also be important to me. And so, well, I must also be a part of it. I want to help. No, it's too dangerous. I must be a part of whatever you do, Tom Check. Don't you understand? I, too, must help. Marina, I... Marina, I love you so much. That old man, he must be terribly ill. He is. Well, he needs good nursing care. Now, you know I could do that. Would you? Where is he? Tom Check. Marina, you... God, you look so beautiful right now. It must be because you feel beautiful. Where are they hidden? Wait. Marina, once I tell you, I... Will you become a part of it, too? Where, Tom Jack? Do you know the cave... The cave? Now, have you forgotten? We found it that day when we went walking. We went inside. Oh, yes. Yes, I remember. Now, the old man is terribly sick. He needs you, Marina. Well, now, first. First, I must go to town. To town? Why? Well, there's Olga. I'll take the child to my brother's house. Oh, of course. She'll be safe there. And, uh, then I'll stop for some medicine. And Tom Jack? Yes. I love you. I know. Oh, Tom Chick, you'll never know how much. How is he now? Quiet. He talks to himself. Oh, I'm frightened. Oh, no, no, most people talk to themselves. No, no. He talks to himself in Hebrew. Well? He has never learned Hebrew. He doesn't know it. Are you sure? Yes. And from what I can understand, it, it's a kind of medieval Hebrew that hasn't been spoken in hundreds of years. Now, how would he know it? I don't understand. What is that? I... I, I don't know how it's to all explain. Over the, all over the floor, all the way back in the cave. What has he done? Well, he... He took the clay that, that you brought him, and, and well, he's he's making. He's, it's in the it's in the form of a man. Yes, he he he's been making a golem. Whatever it is, it's it's like a giant. Where where did he get the clay? He made it from the that that you brought. I didn't bring all that much. <laughs> yes, it's it's frightening. It it. It seems to be growing. I I can't believe my eyes, but there it is. Grandfather, please tell us. Be what I... quiet. But grandfather Sir, what is that? I am about to write down certain words. Certain awful words. And in this place. There must be silence. The silence of the dead. But you promised. You promised. 
And I shall keep my promise, Marina. You have my word. You'll even be rewarded. Well? They're... They're hiding in a cave. A cave? You must do better than that, my dear. You, uh... You pick up the pathway just past our house. And you follow it north for two miles. Now you come to a deep ravine. In front of you is... is what looks like a wall of solid rock. But it isn't. No. Because when you climb to the top of it, you will see the entrance to the cave. Thank you. Sergeant, place her under arrest. But, but you said... I you... said you'd be rewarded. At this point, I don't know how. If you're lying, a firing squad will give you 30 leaden bullets. If you're truthful... There. There are 30 silver krona. It's quiet. It's so quiet. Too quiet. It appears to be in a trance. I wish I knew what to do. No, it's... Don't be discouraged. Marina will know. She... She was starting to be a nurse. But her parents lost their money. And she'll help. Oh, bless her. Yes. She's really a wonderful person. She worries a lot, but... In the end, you can depend on her. Maybe... Maybe what? Maybe... You and your wife should just... Yes? It's, it's not your fight. Yes. Yes, Rachel, it's my fight. It always was my fight. Will you fight with me? I don't know how. Yes, you do. Children! Children! Oh, thank the Lord. He looks better. Children! They have come for us. They have come. Oh, Grandfather, just be... Listen, quiet. outside. Around it, pull back. Look down. Look down, the Nazis. They're climbing up the rock. They know where we are. They know we're here. Come, check. Come, check. We know you're there. Come down. Oh, Tom, Chuck, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for you. Wait, I can hold them off. One man with a rifle can knock them down one at a time. We'll hold out till dark and we'll, we'll try to run for it. No, Tom, Chuck. It's no good. And I'm so tired. No, no, don't lose courage. Tom, Chuck. Save yourself, Tom, Chuck. Tom, Chuck, you're a sensible person. There comes a time, there comes a time when... When what? When, when he no longer hears our prayers. When he says, my children, it is your will. Do with it whatever you will. Destroy yourselves in your own madness. I abandon you. Rachel, Rachel, you mustn't say that. Grandfather. Grandfather, let us save Tom Jack. Let's give ourselves up. Grandfather. Grandfather. Behold, my children. Behold. The thing. That thing he made is moving. The people shall be saved. The murderers shall perish. Grandfather, what have you done? We have been sent a champion. It's a giant. The champion shall smite the mad killers of the innocent. Grandfather. I have written the awful, never-to-be-forgotten words. I have breathed the force of life. Into the champion. Clay giant is moving. Clay no longer. But fire and steel. Look at it. You look through me. It has acquired the force and power of a million suns. He shall burn away the evil that surrounds us. And I charge you, champion. Avenger. Protect us! Call them! Go forth! Go forth! In there! Take them alive! It, it 
it, just, it destroyed them all. To the last man. What, what was it? You saw a golem. Where did it go? It vanished. As if into thin air. The pious old folks still believe. Oh, and they assure you that the golem will reappear one day. When someone shall awaken him to save the people. What is that you're saying? I, oh, I, I remember reading the story of the golem. Rachel. Rachel. Grandfather. Uh, oh, my head. I, I had the strangest dream. I dreamed. I was... Living hundreds of years ago. And and I, I was... Who is this man? Where have I seen you before? Come, Grandfather. We must be on our way. Where? 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 I... I am so tired of running. We will join the partisans. It's time we stopped running and started fighting. Is there, was there, a golem? The question is, what is a golem? A thing of irresistible force. Well, so is a bomb. A British or American bomber flying overhead may have dropped one. On the other hand, the old gentleman was a scientific genius. He could have made one. Or it could have been what you heard. A golem. I'll be back shortly. a legend that a medieval Hebrew scholar created a creature of great strength and power to rescue his beleaguered people from the madness of a mob, a creature called a golem. It is significant that the word golem means unfinished, and this is fitting because to save the world, we can only depend on a certain amount of help to be given us. The rest of the effort must be our own. Our cast included Robert Lansing, Mildred Clinton, Patricia Elliott, Ralph Bell, and Robert Dryden. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, a preview of our next tale. I'll always remember how she looked. She was almost pretty when she had that shy smile on her face. But would it be murder? If all I did was help her to kill herself, she had this insane affinity for a lethally poisonous snake. Sooner or later, she would release him from his cage in the mad delusion that he was her dear friend. Would it be murder? No. It isn't murder. Look at him. This enormous monster coiled in his cage, sleeping. No one had seen me enter this house of crawling, murderous creatures. Here on the side is the latch. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Anheuser-Busch Incorporated, Brewers of Budweiser. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams... This is WBBM Chicago News Radio.